In this video, Professor Scher talks about Infinity's test for the systemic level of senescence. To do this, they measure the level of S beta gal in the blood. S beta gal is an enzyme and considered the most effective biomarker for cellular senescence. You have a test for senescent cells. Um, so you're looking at uh, S A beta gal. Mm -hmm. Could you introduce that test and how it works? Because senescent cells is another big thing. Yeah. So um, beta galactosidase or beta gal for short is an enzyme in our cells. There are many different uh, isoforms uh, of beta gal. And what uh, has been found is the lysosomal uh, form of beta gal is quite specific uh, for senescent cells. And Obviously, we cannot uh, easily isolate lysosomes. It would be too expensive. Fortunately, the uh, activity of beta gal from the lysosome functions at pH uh, 6. Mm. So when you assess the activity of beta gal at pH 6, you are analyzing the uh, activity of beta, lysosome of beta gal. So that's the, uh, that's the theory behind the test. So Senescent cells and uh, express more lysosomal beta gal, and when the senescent cells actually die, and the beta gal uh, protein uh, or enzyme is secreted into the bloodstream, so we measure the beta gal activity in the cell. Um, beta gal is uh, probably one of the uh, better biomarkers for senescence. And mm -hmm. it's not a perfect one because uh, it's not 100% specific for senescent cells. And, and it's not, uh, um, you know, elevated in 100% of the senescent cells either. Mm. Um, but it's a quite a reasonable uh, biomarker for overall senescent activity in our body. Uh, I, I think especially if you couple uh, beta gal activity with some of the uh, serum proteins and uh, called uh, SASAP or SASP proteins, mm -hmm. the senescent associated uh, secreting uh, phenotype. Mm -hmm. and, and these are proteins like uh, many of the inflammatory uh, mediators, you know, IL-6, IL-8, IL-1 beta, and some of the matrix proteins like, you know, MMP1. And you can actually measure the overall senescence pretty well. So, you know, there are many different ways you can measure senescence. And the difficulty is, uh, number one, how many do you want to measure? Or how many can we afford uh, mm -hmm. to measure? Uh, it is, you know, it's, it's also an economical question, obviously. Mm. And certainly you, you want to assess the overall senescence burden in your entire body. And if that's the goal, the only thing that, the only sample that you, you really have is blood. Mm -hmm. Be because, you know, Blood circulates all over the body, and you know a lot of the proteins, the secreted proteins, are dumped into the blood stream. So if you measure blood, you, you kind of get an average a overall level of whatever you you, you measure in, in your entire body. So that's mm -hmm. how many medical tests are, uh, are done, and that's why we use you know blood mostly to uh, uh, to measure uh, diseases or pathological state. So. So I think measuring the overall senescence level is important, just like you know everything else. You you can also you know measure senescence uh, immune senescence or you, your immune cells, but that's only you are only measuring your immune cells. You don't mm. you still don't know what's going on in other parts of your body. So we we actually have done a, a study uh, in cervical cancer, uh, in cervical cancer patients the beta-gal level is much, much higher than 
uh, edge match uh, controls. Mm. And we, we actually published, published the paper a, a few months ago. And also, uh, high senescence patients with the high senescence level has a much worse survival than patients with lower senescence level. So uh, 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 again, so that really demonstrates you know, senescence is important and beta gal is a reasonable surrogate marker for the overall senescence burden. And I think many people will argue, oh, uh, beta gal is not a specific, it's not a, uh, it's not good enough. I, I do agree. Um, beta gal is not uh, good enough, but it's a, it's a, you know, very reasonable. It's a, a marker that can give us a very useful uh, information. And hopefully, you know, other biomarkers will will be found. And I doubt any single um, biomarker will perform much much better than. Beta gal, and maybe there will be one. I, I we'll see. Uh, hopefully, we you know we'll find the you know better biomarkers. But the bottom line is, it's useful. It does give us useful information. Right, and it's telling you that the overall um, senescent burden. So, just like NAD, do we have some kind of a, a scale for senescence? Can we could we define you know who has too much? Yeah. Um, again, that, that's that's um, something that uh, we were were still defining. I mean, we have uh, we have a threshold, and we define the threshold in in young people. Mm. Uh, if you look at the people younger than um, uh, twenty years, and usually uh, doesn't exceed uh, five hundred uh, unit you know, with with our mm. test, and we. We were very conservative when we uh, were setting uh, the abnormal threshold. We set it at 1,500, so three times of uh, uh, the average level of in, in young people. And retrospectively, I think that level was set too high, and mm -hmm. because we 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 have some uh, treatment data now, and. We uh, with the synodetics and with some other longevity management programs, we actually see uh, the reduction of beta gal, um, you know, below um, even uh, you know from you know seven eight hundred a thousand down to less than five hundred. So I, I I think that you you probably want to keep the level as low as possible mm -hmm. and hopefully below let's say seven hundred fifty. Uh, 500 levels, and definitely you don't want it to go over a thousand, and you know, mm -hmm. but a lot of the cervical cancer patients can have levels in the 4,000, 5,000, 6,000. So that mm -hmm. give you some perspective. Right. right, yes. Okay, interesting. And so if we do find we have high levels of senescent cells, uh, what can we do to kind of reduce them? Um, there, there, there are quite a, uh, a few ways you can do it, and you, if, if you actually have high levels, uh, again, you want to have a, you want to improve your uh, lifestyle and, mm -hmm. and oxid, oxidative stress, inflammation, and all these things can actually increase your senescence level uh, as well. Um, but there are many uh, supplements that you can um, take. And the most popular ones are uh, quercetin and fisetin, uh, mm -hmm. EGCG. And I have actually done uh, uh, synodic management on myself. You know, my level was around the 1500 when I started a year ago. I was, mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. At that time, I was not too worried because I defined the level at 1500. <laughs> 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 But I knew I knew there was not a level that I wanted, so uh, I started a, uh, a man management program. So I used the quercetin and and plus vitamin C, and I was able able to get my level to um, my, I'm at about seven hundred uh, seven hundred fifty now. I'm pretty happy, 
and you can be lower, but I'm, I'll take a 750 over 1500. <laughs> so just one very quick question on that. So did you, so when you're, when you're trying to reduce senescent cells, right? Um, if you're taking like fistin, you can take it a chunk and then you, and, and then not. So you kind of pulse it. So can I ask, did you pulse the quercetin or were you taking it daily? I, I, I heard that uh, suggestion over and over again. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure I, I have evidence against that, but from my biological perspective, and I, I rather prefer to not, uh, you know, take a very high doses and, and then suspend. I, I take a quercetin every day. What, what is good or bad, I, I cannot tell it because I don't have a, a controlled experiment done. And but it worked. But it worked for me. It, it, I think it really depends. It, if, you are, if, you are, if you want to use disartinib, for example, uh, to, to manage mm. your, your senescence, I, I, I wouldn't recommend that you are taking uh, disartinib day in and day out. <laughs> then, no, that's a big no, no, no. Um, <laughs> that, that's certainly, I, I, I would agree. But with supplements like um, Kirstein and Fisetin, I, I don't see the reason why we have to stop. And mm. you know, Kirstein is also a CD38 um, mm. uh, inhibitor, and you can, you can help your, your NAD level. So I, I take Kirstein every day. Interesting. Okay, thank you very much. I hope that you found the video informative. Professor Sher is very generous to offer a 10% discount code to our audience for all the tests. Please find the discount code and details in the description. Thank you so much for your kind support. I wish you all well and we'll speak to you again soon.